Bulldogs are the Western Division champions. Mississippi State Bulldogs are the champions of the South. Road is paved with maroon and white. Basketball game is over. Mississippi State on the way to the final four. To win in major college basketball today, a team must have power, finesse, speed, strength, and tenacity. The 1996 Bulldogs had all of these characteristics and more. At the beginning of the year, the elements seemed to be in place for the Bulldogs to have an outstanding season. The talent was there. Enthusiasm was at an all-time high with season tickets at a premium. Finally, the national media was glancing at Mississippi State as a top 20 team. Many preseason polls even had Mississippi State picked to finish in the top 10 in the nation. Could this be the year, the season, the time in history when the Bulldogs go all the way? A dream may be held by our most fervent fans but perhaps too good to be true. The madness started at midnight when ESPN2 chose to come to the hump for the season tip-off. The excitement from last year's Sweet 16 appearance filled the air. There was something special about this team. Who would have believed that the celebration that began in November would last until March? Early in the season, the Bulldogs went on strong individual performances and good coaching, capturing their third straight in-season tournament victory at the Ford Far West Classic in Portland. With a convincing inside-outside game, the Bulldogs had gained media attention as never before. Early in the season, a national television audience waited for a Deep South showdown in Starkville. When the ball was tipped off at the hump, Kentucky was ranked number two in the nation, with the young Bulldogs ranked 10th. The Bulldogs kept an outstanding Kentucky team in sight throughout the first half, showing signs of talent and strength. Then about the middle of the second half, it happened. In less than a minute, the dogs went from three points down to 12, and the hopes of victory faded. When the dust settled, doubts began to arise. Mistakes seemed to happen more frequently. A heartbreaking last second loss to Alabama left the Bulldogs on the short end of the stick again. Some said we were overrated, didn't have enough depth, needed more experience. We're in January. You know, we, we have a long way to go yet, a lot of basketball to play. The Bulldogs' march across the South started with a one-point victory over Tennessee.
but the momentum really started to build with the Georgia game. With Dante Jones on the sidelines, the dogs relied on the long-range artillery of Darrell Wilson and Marcus Bullard. Wilson's 27 points kept State in the game, but late in the second half, it was Marcus Bullard's three-pointers that put the leash on the other Bulldogs for good. The sunny South turned cold for the Auburn Tigers when the dogs traveled to the loveliest village on the plains. Freezing weather iced the Bulldogs in causing the game to be moved to Sunday, and Mr. Jones was back. Thirteen rebounds and 22 points from Dante held off an outstanding Auburn team that had played tough at home all year. With the game coming down to the wire, big Eric Dampier sent the game into overtime. Darrell Wilson had been quiet most of the game, but when the chips are down, Darrell comes up. Darrell showed the Tigers what overtime work is all about, scoring 11 of the team's 14 points in the bonus period. Things were turning around, and a win over Arkansas would mean a share of the Western Division crown. Starkville is known for good barbecue, and the Bulldogs were warming up the grill for when the Hogs came to town. Arkansas has a reputation for playing good defense for 40 minutes. But on the afternoon of February 6th, the Hogs not only got a lesson in how to play defense, but a good primer on offense. Wilson pulls up. For Wilson. The Bulldogs held Arkansas to 36% from the field and totally buried the Razorbacks with outstanding play from the Mississippi State guards who shot 75% for the game. Final score, Bulldogs 78, Razorbacks 63. That's extra spicy. Big victory for us, big one, um, you know, Arkansas is on a 5-0 run, and um, they're coming here tonight, you know, expecting to win one on the road. You know? I mean, like I said, anytime you get one on the road in the SEC, it's big for anybody's program. You know, they came here hype, and, um, you know, they was caught up into the ESPN dig by tail thing, just as well, just as, well as we were. So, um, you know, we knew we had to come out and play ball, because they were too. So I, I believe everybody on our team stepped up and did their job, and um, we came out with a victory. Throughout the 1995-96 season, at different times and different places, someone stepped forward to provide a spark, an extra lift to raise the team to even greater heights. The name Dante Jones has a ring to it. It's the name of a ball player who in a few short months learned to give and receive. Anyone could see that the talent was there. He had shown that at the junior college level. But the SEC is different. Everyone on the floor had been a star at one time or another, and this is a different league. Coach Williams has an organized system that works based on discipline, execution, and planning. Things were different now. So how was this freewheeling natural athlete going to fit in? The answer came in the Oklahoma game. To complement the fast start of Dante, Darrell Wilson poured in 32 points. Oklahoma's All-American Ryan Miner felt the Bulldogs bite, managing only seven out of 19 from the floor. The rest of his teammates were held to less than 40% for the game, leading to another Mississippi State victory. One major difference in good teams and great teams is their ability to perform on the road.
The Bulldogs had proven that they could play in any arena, but their mettle was soon to be tested again at Alabama. Playing in Tuscaloosa is never easy, especially against a physical team like the Crimson Tide. It wasn't easy, but when the buzzer sounded to end the first half, the elephants were wondering where the stampede had come from. Balanced scoring from Jones, Dampier, Wilson, and Bullard resulted in the best first half performance of the year. When the scoreboard read Bulldogs 54, tied 27, it was all over but the shouting, and shout they did to announce that the Bulldogs were now in the driver's seat in the Western Division race. When Auburn arrived at the hump, they found a new band of Bulldogs with a new purpose and sense of pride. The Auburn game was also senior day at the hump, a special time to pause and recognize the players who will step on the court for the last time at home. The score was deadlocked at the half, but that was soon to change. Sensing what was at stake, the dogs turned it up a notch in the second half, holding Auburn scoreless for more than eight minutes. From a two-point deficit, the Bulldogs climbed to a 15-point lead with Eric Dampier leading the way. As the game ended, it was only fitting that the final basket was made by Bubba Wilson, a young man who, in spite of pain and injury, continued to contribute to the Bulldog effort. Bart Heisch works against Lance Weems. Bart will run the clock out, not going to give it to Bubba Wilson. Wilson for three. Got it! <laughs> Bubba Wilson may have made his first three of his, the second three of his career. Well, I think they just gave him two, but it was oh. a great shot from the corner for Bubba. And Auburn puts up the final shot of the basketball game. The Bulldogs are the Western Division champions. 67 to 51, and there's Bedlam at the Humphrey Coliseum. Mississippi State had done it again, wrapping up its second straight Western Division crown and securing a first place seed in the SEC tournament. <music> Going into the tournament, the Bulldogs were playing relaxed, intense basketball. When defense was needed, someone stepped up. When a sacrifice was needed, one was made. When a shot had to fall, it went down. It can truly be said that the Mississippi State University basketball team had arrived. In the opening game of the SEC tournament, the Bulldogs once again faced their South Alabama nemesis, Auburn. Specters from tournament play in the past were summoned by the media but those ghosts would soon vanish. As the game began, maroon and white fans around the country quietly held their breath. The first half was a seesaw affair with a scrappy bunch of Auburn Tigers taking a four-point lead with 13 seconds to play in the half. Once again, the strength of Marcus Bullard proved critical as he drove the lane for what looked to be State's last basket to close the gap to two. Fouled on the play, Marcus went to the line where he missed a chance for a three-point play. Or did he? Maybe he and Eric had planned a special play to end the scoring of the half with Dampier tipping in to tie the game. If there were any questions about the Bulldogs' intensity in tournament play, they were soon answered in the second half. As they had done all year, the defense came to life and the offense rolled. It started about three minutes into the half with an alley-oop to Dampier from Bullard. 
A heartbeat later, the Bulldogs had the lead, which they would not relinquish for the rest of the game. In eight and a half minutes, the Dogs had outscored the Tigers 16 to two, leading to a convincing 11 point victory for the Bulldogs. This was a different team. The second step to the SEC crown was blocked by the Georgia Bulldogs. More than 24,000 fans were in attendance to witness a true dog fight. The top dog in this showdown, however, would wear maroon and white. The multitude of fans in the Superdome would see a total domination of a Sweet 16 team in 40 minutes of tournament play. Mississippi State scored the first seven points of the game and never looked back. A mixture of power and finesse kept Georgia off balance. Solid play from the MSU bench poured more oil on the flames of victory that seemed to be burning brighter by the minute. At the half, the Bulldogs led by 19 over Georgia. Under the boards, MSU collected 16 more rebounds than Georgia. On the offensive end of the court, the dogs from Starkville blistered the net 60% of the time while holding the other dogs to only 40%. The pace never let up in the second half, and when all the barking was over, Mississippi State had collared another impressive win. The Mississippi State University Bulldogs would play for the SEC tournament title. No votes had to be cast, no ballots taken, it would be decided on the court in head-to-head -head competition against one of the top teams in the country. Who would believe this had happened? The fans wanted to believe. The media? Well, it was nice while it lasted, but they're facing a team that defeated them in January and Kentucky has had a cakewalk through the tournament. Why not one more? But there were a few who were not afraid of blue and white or any other color. There were a few who knew that together they could accomplish more than they ever could alone. And there was one who knew that discipline, practice, and guts could carry men to new heights they had not known before. These were the men who wore maroon and white on that Sunday afternoon in New Orleans who brought home the first SEC tournament crown in school history and the first outright SEC championship in 34 years. The first half clinic was conducted by Mr. Dante Jones, who demonstrated how to jump, run, and fly through Wildcats. He rang the bell eight out of 11 times from the field on his way to 17 first half points. Four of Mississippi State's five starters played 94% of the available minutes in the first half and nailed down a five-point lead at halftime. Everyone knows that Kentucky is 10 deep with a few extra starters in the closet. How could the young dogs keep up this pace? Well, it's been said that the first few minutes of a half are the most important. A team that controls the tempo controls the game. As for the tempo of the second half, it was double time, and the controls were full throttle, pedal to metal. Dante picked up where he left off with some surprise offense from the quiet member of the starting five, Russell Walters. The man who likes eggs in country music did a little down-home picking on the Wildcats. The duo of Dante and Walters choreographed an 11-2 run that knocked the Wildcats back to their old Kentucky home. Frantic timeouts by Kentucky only prolonged the inevitable. Darrell Wilson filling it up from the outside. Big Eric pounding it from inside. And like money in the bank, Darrell calmly making free throws down the stretch to clinch the victory while the Wildcats were wondering, who are these guys? There was reason to celebrate that day in March, as our own Jack Crystal describes. Clock is running out. This ball game is over. You can wrap it in maroon and white. Mississippi State Bulldogs are the champions of the Southeastern Conference, beating the Kentucky Wildcats 84 to 73, an 11 point win by Coach Richard Williams and the Mississippi State Bulldogs. 
If the season had ended here, it would have been an outstanding year. Winning 22 games, the Western Division, and the outright championship of one of the toughest basketball conferences in the nation. Two players were named to the all-tournament team, Darrell Wilson and Dante Jones, who also received the honor of the most outstanding player of the tournament. Eric Dampier and Darrell Wilson were also named to first team All-SEC. These accomplishments alone are what dreams are made of. But this was March and a touch of spring was in the air. It was a time of new beginnings. Like I said, our main goal was to come out in the big Kentucky. Um, we, made it, we made them get in the half-court game, not a full-court game. And um, our main goal was to, to dictate the tempo, and we did that and got some win, and hopefully we can carry this winning streak on. The second season had begun, and the Bulldogs set their sights on Indianapolis, Indiana, in the heart of basketball country, to play in the NCAA tournament. The challenge ahead would not be easy. The Southeastern Regional was filled with top 10 teams, the ACC tournament champion and last year's defending national champion. When the Bulldogs took the court against Virginia Commonwealth, the powerful offense shown in the SEC tournament seemed to sputter. Turnovers were frequent and the rim seemed to have an imaginary lid on it. It was time for someone to stand and be counted. The true measure of a man is not always the size of his physique, but his heart. Bart Heitch came from the bench to give the ailing Bulldogs an offensive injection and a dose of spirit and energy for good measure. It was as if he were making a simple statement. Not yet. This season is not over and it's not going to happen on this court. They say enthusiasm is contagious and his teammates responded. Early in the second half, the Bulldogs went to their bread and butter, Eric Dampier, on the inside to loosen up the rim a bit, then outside to Darrell. With four fouls on Dampier, freshman Tyrone Washington helped carry the load with solid second half play. Since the Bulldog offense was a little on the slow side, it seems only fair that the Bulldog defense was running at full speed. VCU was held to a mere 31% from the floor. The lid on their basket was colored maroon and white. With five minutes left in the game, Eric returned, and Darrell came to life scoring 12 of the last 16 points to hold off Virginia Commonwealth 58 to 51. It seemed almost certain that MSU would have to face the defending national champions to reach the Sweet 16, but a disciplined Princeton team had other ideas. Legendary coach Pete Carrill had led his team to victory and the Tigers lay in wait for the Bulldogs. The experts predicted that Princeton's controlled movement-oriented offense would wear down the high-flying Bulldogs. What the experts could not see were the hours spent in Bulldog practice sessions building the skills, the discipline, and patience to recognize what the opposition was doing and take it apart. Systematically, with precision, the Bulldogs sliced apart the Princeton defense from the inside, something UCLA was unable to do. Marcus Bullard played one of his best games of the year with absolutely no turnovers and nine assists. The banged up dogs used a mixture of zone and man-to-man -man defenses to hold the Tigers to less than 35% shooting from the field. This defensive effort combined with outstanding rebounding made the 22 point victory even sweeter. For the second year in a row, the Mississippi State Bulldogs were headed for the Sweet 16. Uh, I would like to say to my assistant coaches, Rick Stansberry, Greg Carter, Owen Miller, George Brooks, uh, they, they deserve the credit because they did a magnificent job putting together a game plan in one day, uh, a game plan that gave us an opportunity to win uh, against a very good Princeton team. And then the players went out and executed the game plan. So obviously we're thrilled uh, to have won and be returning to the Sweet 16 and going to Lexington, Kentucky.
The storybook saga appropriately continued in another center of college basketball, Rupp Arena, a place where great basketball is played, a place where the hopes of great achievement both rise and fall in less than an hour of excitement. It was also a place where Mississippi State beat Kentucky in 1995, a place filled with positive memories for the Bulldogs. Into this great arena walked the kids from towns like Kennedy, Myrick, Winfield, Long Beach, New Hebron, and Indianola. These young men were about to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the tournament's number one seed, the University of Connecticut Huskies. From the opening tip, the Bulldogs set the pace of the game, taking to the air early. When the Huskies started looking for the close-in attack, the kid from Kennedy took over. Five out of six times from long range, Darrell Wilson found the mark. Jones comes to Darrell Wilson, who fires for three. He's got it again. Wilson gets his sixth three of the afternoon, and the Bulldogs take the 13-point lead. Connecticut back up the floor, working now. And just to keep things balanced, Mr. Dampier let them know he came to play, too. Walters coming back to Darrell Wilson, screen. Darrell rolls left behind that screen, dishes it to Dampier low. Dampier double team, slams it in the goal with a major league slam dunk. Boy, that was in your face and in the goal, and uh, not much that Connecticut could do about that. A balanced offensive attack and excellent defense resulted in a 12-point lead at halftime. But the Bulldogs didn't know they weren't supposed to win. In the second half, the vaunted Yukon guards were held in check by the strength of Marcus Bullard and Darrell Wilson. Allen could only manage three out of 14 shots in the second half. That's great defense in anybody's book. For the first time in his career, Eric Dampier played 40 straight minutes without a rest. That's a lot of minutes for a big man. But this was a big game. And in big games, a coach hopes that his seniors will rise to the occasion. And rise they did. The patented Darrell Wilson jump shot with its distinctive style ripped the net 64% of the time for a game-high 27 points. On the inside, Russell Walters banged the boards and patrolled the paint to keep things under control. As the band played, the Maroon faithful felt a new sense of pride when the final horn announced that the Mississippi State Bulldogs were victors. Johnson will play it in bounds, and Johnson does give it to Sheffer for the long jumper that is an air ball, cleared out by Allen. He's going to pop up along with that's an air ball. Whit Hughes has the rebound for Mississippi State. You can wrap it in maroon and white. Well, the Bulldogs are going to be in the championship ball game of the Southeast Regionals. They beat the number one seed, UConn. This Bulldog team had now moved into unfamiliar territory, the rarefied air of the Elite Eight. Through its on-the-court performance, this team had proven it belonged in the top ten all along. No brag, just fact. That was big. I don't shake nobody hand no like that. That was big. <laughs> but that's not what we came here for. No way! We came here to get two. You understand? We came here to get two, not one. Right. Came up here. There was one more bridge to cross on the road to the Final Four. The maroon and white fans who made the trek north sensed what was at stake. The pre-game pep rally set the stage for an even greater celebration to come. Cincinnati brought a tough-talking, tough-walking bunch of Bearcats to Lexington. Seated number two in the tournament, they boasted a 28-4 record coming into the game with Mississippi State. The Bearcats, playing solid basketball, thought they were ready for anything. However, the experienced tournament tough club found out very early that Bulldogs and Bearcats don't mix. Once again, the Bulldogs came out of the block smoking. Dante Jones picked up where he left off in the first game, scoring the dog's first points with a hesitating jump shot. In less than a minute, he added a three-pointer to set in motion a team that had a vision, a vision that came more clearly into focus as the game progressed. Gets it back, gives it to Darrell Wilson, out to Jones. Free throw line jumper, home. Dante Jones 
Free throw line jumper has been a one-man scoring machine for Mississippi State. He has scored. By the time the first television timeout occurred, the Dogs had a commanding nine-point lead. Every time the Bearcats made a move, the Bulldogs countered. From the tall to the short, each man played his role to lead the Dogs to an eight-point lead at the half. Dante's seven for 11 from the floor contributed to MSU's impressive 56% field goal average in the first half. The Bulldogs were just 20 minutes away from history. It would take the broad shoulders of Eric Dampier, the legs of the leaper, and the hard nose play of MSU's point guard, who has many of the characteristics of an NFL linebacker when the chips are down. Bulldogs play the perimeter again. Bullard penetrates into the lane. Bullard with a jumper is good. We've got a foul on the floor. Well, that's a good job. He just drove it in the middle. And the contact by Legree as he took the shot. And the Bulldogs take a seven point lead, and Bullard will have an opportunity at a three point. When help was needed, it came in the form of Tyrone Washington, Whit Hughes, and Bart Heitch, three men who had all year long accepted their roles and quietly contributed significantly to the Bulldogs' success. The final chapter of the Southeast Regional was like a magnificent dance, choreographed by a master and brilliantly performed by his cast, who complemented each other with strength, speed, and finesse. Ice will work against pressure now, and Bart begins to dribble it and move it around, and Cincinnati's not going to chase him. This basketball game is over. Mississippi State's on the way to the Final Four with a 10-point win over the Cincinnati Bearcats, and their Bulldogs all in the center of Rupp Arena, hugging one another and stumbling off the floor. A little bit of all of it. Well, it's a, it's a great opportunity for Mississippi State in sports. Yeah! Big ball! Dante Jones was unanimously named most valuable player, with Eric Dampier and Darrell Wilson receiving honors on the all-tournament team. The Bulldogs of 96 had accomplished what no other team in Mississippi State history had done. Most games played, most victories in a single season, the most points in a single season, the first team in school history to reach the national championship finals the final four. In a span of two weeks, Mississippi State had defeated three top ten teams on a neutral court. It seems like everyone just played a terrible game against the Bulldogs. Some of the top teams in the country could manage to shoot only around 30 percent against the Dogs. Is there a pattern here? We think so. There is a new name to add to Lexington and Indianapolis. It's called Starkville. It's where the Bulldogs live. And when the Road Warriors return, fans of all ages pack the Golden Triangle Regional Airport to express their joy and pride in what this team had accomplished. The week preceding the Final Four was chaotic at best. The stampede to buy tickets left many a faithful fan in its wake. The national media frantically pulled out their atlases to locate Starkville. Even the northern newspapers and the eastern press showed up. National TV networks, interviews, teleconferences, and, oh yes, prepare to play for the national championship. In the middle of the melee, 
The coaching staff and the players had to focus on the final stretch of the journey that began in November. The Syracuse Orange men were waiting in the Meadowlands, just outside New York City. And that's a long way from Myrick, Mississippi. The Final Four is one of the hardest tickets in sports to obtain, and there is a reason for it. The atmosphere, the aura that surrounds playing for a national championship is unlike any other athletic event. In front of the whole world, four teams would duel to be the best in college basketball. The maroon and orange met at center court. Just as they had in earlier tournament games, the dogs jumped out to an early lead. The boards belonged to the Bulldogs, and excellent outside shooting kept the team in the game. In spite of 13 turnovers, Mississippi State shot almost 64% in the first half and tied the score at the end of the first 20 minutes. In the Bulldogs' first Final Four appearance, they met a well-coached physical Syracuse team that eventually went on to face Kentucky for the national title. But in true Bulldog style, however, they never quit, never let down. It is only fitting that the last shot made in 1996 was a three-pointer by Darrell Wilson. I'm glad to be a part of uh, a group of seniors that uh, I've been around and people I've been around for three years. Darrell, it's good to play with people that, that, that have a lot of heart and a lot of pride. And uh, she feel like you can go out every night and you know they're going to give their best effort and you're going to give your best effort. Uh, I just I'm, I feel real proud about playing for Mississippi State and uh, I think it's the best accomplishment of my life so that pretty well wraps it up. When the buzzer sounded and this glorious season finally came to a close, there was a standing ovation given to this team that they never heard. Some 2,000 students had gathered to watch the game in Humphrey Coliseum. When the game was over, almost in unison with cowbells ringing, they stood and saluted the 1996 Mississippi State Bulldogs. There was disappointment, but not sadness. These fans joined the followers in the Meadowlands to applaud the accomplishments of a coach with the dream, the drive, and the intelligence to lead. They saluted the young men who listened to their hearts alone and believed in what they could achieve. They cheered the team that had accomplished more than any team in Mississippi State history. They cheered the 1996 Mississippi State Bulldogs and their championship season. <laughs>